Yo, what's up? It's the incredible Mr. Fantastic Skin Rich's Butter Brother number one or two, depending on who you ask. Supreme La Rock is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in Philly, started DJing in 1981. It was all about having that master samurai relationship. You know, I met DJ Groove at a young age, and he was the guy that, he was technically the king of Philly when it came to breaks and records and spinning those records. So, you know, he took me under his wing, and, it, and I just, you know, I was already doing it. But when he took me under his wing, he just really molded me and showed me, like, this is how you really do it. You're doing it but this is how you really do it. In Philly, large black population, there's always been the mom and pop record stores. Always been, there's always been the basement spots. And you, and you know what, let's, let's, let's even go past that. Let's talk about Val's. Cause Val's is, was, probably will always be that spot. And the thing about, what makes it grimy is the fact that it's not organized. And what's lovely about it is, not just everyone can go there because it's like the counter's here, the front door's there, give me your list, I'll call you if I have it. What's great about it. So it's like, it's grimy in the mentality and it's grimy in the fact that it's just dusty and it's just unorganized, you know, but it's, it's just so dope. And I, like, I've come up on there, Supreme's come up on there, you know, so that's like the place and everyone comes up. Uh, I came up in Seattle in the 80s as a b-boy, you know, I was a b-boy and I was buying records to dance to and a Village Voice issue came out and Bambada listed like the top 100 breaks and so I took that list to the record store, I started digging for all those records. For one of the first records I bought was Baby Huey and the Babysitters. I wasn't into DJing, I was just, I was a dancer at the time, so. Treacherous 3 came to town and DJ Easy Lee did a routine on both turntables that blew my mind and I was like, wow, I want to do that. You know, I think, we try to do it and learn to do it. And you know, eventually dancing faded out and there was like a natural progression. You know, I came home one day and I couldn't walk in my room because I had so many records. I'd sneak in clubs and watch the DJ, you know, and some, like, back then they had actual booths and they were, like, hidden away from the crowd. Somehow I'd work my way up into the booth, hang out with a DJ all night, and uh, just try to learn, you know, soak up game. The way I progress is that, because me and Skeem talk about it all the time, because people, you know, they ask us this question, and the truth of the matter is we never stop doing what we do. And we still do it. You see, I haven't got any sleep in the last three days, you know, because we're ripping and running, digging, DJing, and, and that's what we do. And, you know, we still watch cartoons, we still eat cereal. Two thousand eight? Yeah. Two thousand eight. I bought, um, Supreme to Philly to do the, the my party, the hot peas and butter party, and um, you know, but I'd already known who Supreme was years ago. I knew his legacy. I knew, you know, the legendariness of him, and uh, you know, brought him to Philly, rocked the party, and we became boys ever since. You know, so the people back east would say that they I reminded them of Steve Richards. I'm like, who's Steve Richards? Like. Well, he's got like sneakers and toys and all this ill stuff. He was, he was the dude. I mean, it was he was the split in the image of me. You know, we were records, toys, sneakers, posters, fur coats. He was rocking his. Trading I was rocking. Cards. Yeah, you know, trading cards, everything, comic books. So you know, it was that was the connection right there. I can't really define what a digger is because I'm not a digger. I just I buy what I like. That's something that you know me and him have went back and forth. We always talk about. We've always bought what we liked. And, you know, over the years, like you said, the term digging in the crates or a digger was like stamped on us, you know what I mean? 
At the end of the day, it's all about the music. Whether it's a dollar, a thousand dollars, it's gotta be a good record. And that's the thing, like you saw me even today at the record, at the record swap. I'm not just buying up a, a rare record just because. You see my list, I gotta like the record. I gotta want the record. I'm not just buying records, you know? It has to be a good record. And that's where I think it, like, it's really gotten nerdy to the point where people are like, it's rare, it's rare, it's rare. But yeah, can you play the record? about Insta Diggers? Insta Diggers. We, I think we made that up. We made that up. We made that up. For all you hashtag Insta Diggers. So what is an Insta Digger? It's when they see what you posted and then they go get it and dig for it. You know, I might post a record and the next day every copy that was on Discogs is gone all of a sudden. That's Insta Diggers at work. I have, an, I have an unwritten digging rule. If my man comes to town and I take him to one of my secret spots and he pulls something I've been looking for, he has to give that to me. That's an unwritten digging rule. That's his undigging, un, unwritten digging rule because for me, I find it, I pull it, I take it. It's my money. He's fantasizing because if he didn't know about the spot and I didn't take him there, he wouldn't have been able to pull it. You actually did that to me once. I've done it to a lot of people. Yeah, okay. So that's my unwritten digging rule. So you'll do that? I can roll with that. That's just proper etiquette in my eyes. All right, you know what? Let's talk about this little story. So, flew to Seattle, rock a party. I stay with my homie right there. He leaves me with nothing in the fridge. Half a pack of Ritz crackers, this much orange juice. Yet he'll take credit for the dig and be like, it's mine. Friendship, that's what it's about. It's about friendship. And then we made him breakfast. Oh, see, redeems himself. Shout outs to Cratery, shout outs to Discogs. Shout out to Love Handle Radio. And shout out Live Convention 16. All day, every day. Salute. Toronto. Be original, kids. Find an OG to learn from. Be original. And don't do drugs, just stay in school and have a good summer. <laughs>